Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com. And you know what? Horror movies are so often remembered more for their villains than for their heroes, for the grotesque and terrifying monsters, whether human or alien, which terrorise the protagonists. And so, beyond the script or director, creature design is a hugely important part of crafting a memorable horror movie icon which burrows itself deep into the viewer's psyches. While it's tough to imagine that these ten legends of the genre that we're going to be taking a look at today would have appeared in any other form, fate nearly had other plans in store by way of earlier concept designs. Whether they were switched out before shooting began or the filmmakers had to frantically change things up during or even after principal photography was completed, in each of these cases, these indelible genre mainstays almost looked totally different. So with this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 horror movie monsters that almost look totally different. Number 10. The Xenomorph – Alien there are few movie monsters, if any, more viscerally iconic than that of Alien's Xenomorph, the discomfortingly psychosexual masterwork of surrealist artist H.R. Geiger. But before Geiger put his indelible stamp on the creature, screenwriter Dan O'Bannon and his artist Ron Cobb took their own stab at designing it, resulting in this more conventionally alien piece of concept art. The four-legged iteration of the monster was a far cry from the more sleek, elegant final design, and above all else, it's tough to imagine anyone thinking of this Lovecraftian monstrosity as anything close to the perfect organism. Ultimately, Geiger took over and lent his unique vision to the project, resulting in one of the few truly original monster designs in Hollywood, and one which continues to incite fear over 40 years later. Number 9. The Crooked Man – The Conjuring 2 Though The Conjuring 2 was dominated by a demon nun, audiences should also remember the presence of The Crooked Man, the gangly entity which makes a brief yet unsettling appearance in the movie. Character artist Jared Krzyzewski designed The Crooked Man with director James Wan, but before they settled on the suited-up final look for the character, he worked through many other iterations, including a horrifyingly grotesque, skinless version. Ultimately, it looks like it would have been a better fit for the aesthetic of the Silent Hill franchise rather than The Conjuring, but it certainly cuts the necessary terrifying figure. Number 8. Blair Thing – The Thing in John Carpenter's The Thing, the titular parasite's final form is that of Blair Thing, a revolting abomination which combines its more typically tentacled alien form with the features of the recently assimilated Blair and Gary. Though Blair Thing was originally supposed to be featured much more extensively in the film's climax before being blown up by MacReady, technical limitations kept its presence only fleeting. However, storyboard artist Mike Plug had his own distinct version and a far more elaborate rendition of the Blair Blair thing, which would feature more distinctly human features of both Blair and Gary, as well as flailing tentacles and spider legs seen on the other forms of the thing earlier on in the movie. It's fair to assume that the production constraints prevented a more articulated design from coming to fruition, because as spectacular as the film's effects are, practical animatronics are extremely expensive and time-consuming. Number 7. Pinhead Hellraiser Hellraiser's Pinhead is undeniably one of the most unique humanoid antagonists in all of horror, defined by the evenly spaced nails driven through his skull and his fetish-style leather getup. It's a design which so thoroughly sells the audience of the character and his sadomasochistic proclivities, yet Barker's own original design drafts for the character, which he dubbed the Hell Priest, were actually quite different. Beyond the nails emerging from his head, earlier scribblings of Pinhead were less S&M and, and painted the character as more akin to either a monk or a butcher. In one design, Pinhead is inspired by Catholic garb, while in another, he's wearing an apron not unlike that of a butcher. In the end, though, Barker decided to lean fully into the character's kinkiness, and so a genre icon was born. Number 6. The Pale Man – Pan's Labyrinth Guillermo del Toro's Oscar-winning dark fantasy Pan's Labyrinth is a masterpiece of design, as evidenced no better than by the unforgettable appearance of the child-eating monster known as the Pale Man. In the final film, the creature is a pale humanoid which wears its eyeballs in its long, spindly hands. But concept artist Sergio Sandoval went through countless iterations of the Pale Man before del Toro settled on the one that he liked. Easily the most fascinatingly grotesque of these concepts is the one which leans even more heavily into body horror horror, with the pale man's face reimagined as a gaping, toothed maw from which a series of tentacles can be seen to emerge. Whether for technical reasons or simply down to his own tastes, Del Toro ended up picking the more simple, streamlined final design, but it goes without saying that Sandoval's earlier versions were totally haunting in their own right. 
Number five, the Death Angels, a quiet place. A quiet place is sound-seeking extraterrestrial invaders, never named in the movie but referred to as the Death Angels in promotional materials, are armored, animalistic creatures bearing angular limbs and plated facial structures which grants them an acute sense of hearing. But the Death Angels' design was actually altered quite late in post-production, with early designs for the creatures, created by concept artist Luis Carrasco, making them look even more recognizably humanoid and also far larger. Given that this original design looks not unlike a generic Final Fantasy boss, it's probably for the best that the director, John Krasinski, ultimately opted to get a little weirder with the monster's look. Number 4. Pennywise – It Andy Machete's 2017 It remake was already fighting an uphill struggle, considering that audiences were still incredibly fond of Tim Curry's portrayal of Pennywise, the dancing clown, whose design in the 1990s miniseries had been a staple of pop culture for almost 30 years. Redesigning Pennywise in a way that paid respect to both the Curry movie and King's source novel, while also offering up enough of a fresh spin to be worthwhile, was no easy feat. But Machete and his talented team of artists absolutely nailed it. Kitting Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise out in a Victorian-era costume which called back to the entity's undying longevity with a less exaggerated, more washed-out approach to the clown's face makeup. Unsurprisingly, the design was heavily workshopped during pre-production, with most of the passes making Pennywise look more outwardly weathered and terrifying rather than the more well-kempt, inviting Pennywise scene in the final film. The concepts are certainly creepy as hell, though perhaps a little over-designed for a character that thrives on its ability to infiltrate. Number 3. Annabelle Annabelle Considering that an Annabelle spin-off movie was a prospect before The Conjuring had even hit cinemas, it followed that director James Wan went to tremendous lengths to ensure that the possessed doll was sufficiently creepy to sustain its own franchise. And with its off-puttingly rosy cheeks, ashen skin and dead, piercing eyes, Annabelle was certainly the last thing that any sane parent would ever consider giving to their kid. But the original concept designs for the character took things in a far more grotesque direction, depicting Annabelle as missing at least one eye, if not both, while her porcelain exterior would be cracked and extremely grubby. Oh, and in one of the concept pieces, she's kitted out as some sort of child bride for some reason. Ew. Perhaps Wan's thinking here was that these designs were just too gross to be believably handed from a parent to a child, and let's face it, the final one is already stretching credibility to its breaking point in that regard. Number 2. The Yaojua Predator much like the Xenomorph, Predator's Yaojua is one of the most distinctive monsters in all of movie history. A dreadlock-wearing humanoid reptilian alien kitted out in ceremonial battle garb alongside a variety of futuristic weapons. Oh, and let's not forget about that fleshy mandible. But the original Predator was a far underwhelming cry from that articulated, statuesque final design. But it's actually one that got far enough through production to be actually shipped to Mexico for a test shoot. Arnold Schwarzenegger famously referred to the ridiculous-looking Predator 1.0 as a lizard suit with the head of a duck. And only after director John McTiernan personally complained to the studio was it agreed to temporarily shut things down while special effects legend Stan Winston was brought in to fix things. With a little creative input from his pal James Cameron, Winston created the far taller, more warrior-esque final Predator, and was ultimately played by the towering Kevin Peter Hall. And number one, Cthulhu. Underwater. Sci-fi horror film Underwater sees a group of underwater drill workers facing off against a series of Lovecraftian monsters, the end boss of which eventually reveals itself to be H.P. Lovecraft's inimitable tentacled creation Cthulhu. But it turns out director William Eubank only decided to include Cthulhu in the movie during the film's two-year post-production period. During shooting, the creatures were simply intended to be mysterious Lovecraft-esque aliens, with the gigantic alien monster seen at the end of the movie referred to as the Behemoth in the script. Because much of Lovecraft's work, including Cthulhu, is now public domain, Eubank was able to use the character in the movie of his own accord. Though before he settled on Cthulhu during the design process, the final antagonist almost looked entirely different. An original concept depicted the creature as more of a definitively humanoid entity, with elongated limbs not unlike that of Pan's Labyrinth's Pale Man. In the end, though, Cthulhu and all other smaller sea monsters in the movie were redesigned to be tentacled and, well, definitely more Lovecraft-like.